What's up, Trekkies? Okay, so quick little overview. Aaron and I are not leveled up to maximum yet, but the mirror event's going on, but I think I've covered that before. If anything, it's really basic. Go in, if you're an engineer, hit the satellites. If you're tactical, and I stress this a lot, if you're tactical, you kill shit. Don't think it's your job to go around and do the satellites. Don't think it's your job to close the rifts. Your job is to kill shit. Also, science, close the rifts as you can. I, I cannot tell you how many times I've seen so many escorts that are tactical officers just flying around trying to close shit. And I'm like, you, you have lots of DPS. Blow the shit out of the sky, especially in normal. But anyways, that's not what we're here today about. We're here today because I'm getting a lot of flack, personally, within uh, some of my fleet, but mostly with just random players because we all know your general STO MMO player, in general, just even on WoW, can just be a douche. <laughs> Sorry for the language, but it's true. A lot of people that have watched these videos assume I'm gonna have the Dauntless, because it's a tier six ship. Or I'm gonna have the Intel Scry, because it's an intelligent ship, it's the newest ship. And I'm like, no, I really like the Vesta. And everyone's like, no one wants a tier five upgrade ship. It's a piece of junk. And I'm like, what? No, no, it's not. We're not gonna have any drawings for me today. We have a list. Um, yeah, this is not... I had to log in and get some of these sh stats for my own ship. I don't have a Dauntless as the thing. There's a reason why. So, we're gonna go over the fact of why you shouldn't pick on people that have sea store ships that have been upgraded. Because they're actually just as good, if not better, than a tier 6 ship. Depending on what kind it is. Like, just because the, uh, whatever, I already forgot its name right now. The cruiser is a tier 6 does not necessarily mean that a properly equipped Odyssey 3-pack is not going to be that great in comparison. Guardian class, that's what it is. Guardian. Guardian of the galaxy. Haha. -ha. Since I got these from Sto uh, Gamepedia over here, this is the Dauntless. We're going to go over this real fast. Its hull is 29,750, 36,000 at 60. 50 then 60. Got a shield modifier of 1.3. It's got three in the front, three in the back, 150 crew, commander science, lieutenant commander tactical, lieutenant science intelligence, lieutenant engineering, lieutenant tactical, five science, two engineering, three tactical, 14 turn rate, 0.15 in, in, in impulse modifier, and a 50 inertia, which means that you can, the inertia works faster. I know inertia seems a little bit weird, but the higher your number, the, the better things happen, you slow down and whatnot. That's the Dauntless. Whereas my Vesta, which is the surveillance explorer, the science science one, when I upgraded it, I got an extra console slot. It started out as 27, you know, the Stow Wiki says 27,000 point, 27.9 thousand um, hull. And I logged in and I currently at like 56, whatever, I'm not even capped yet. And I've got 48,000, which understandable, that's my skill coming into effect. So I'd probably have significantly higher on the Dauntless because I have like six in the Structural Integrity skill. However, my shield modifier is 1.35 on the Vesta, which is a percentage, so it's always going to stay that way. Weapons, three in the front, three in the back. Can equip the special dual cannons. There's a plus. Uh, crew 750, so it takes a little bit for the crew to go away and you can still have decent hull repair. Commander Science, so same thing. Lieutenant Commander Universal, different. Lieutenant Engineering, same thing. Lieutenant Tactical, same thing. Ensign Universal. So that's four buff slots that are completely universal. They just don't take the intelligence that I know of. I don't know. I didn't research that. I'm a bad person. The thing is, the Dauntless has one, two, three, four, five, or six science ability. Maximum, right? right? Yeah, because it's Lieutenant Science and Commander Science. So it's six. The Vesta has four plus Lieutenant Commander Universal, so Lieutenant Commander Science, so three, plus an Ensign Science. Plus an Ensign Universal, if you want that. So seven science ability. Um, I have... An, I have an engineering in there because I like engineering team. It's got more science, science, science than the Dauntless. The Dauntless is a little bit more tactical oriented, being a Lieutenant Commander Tactical, but that it does allow you for... See, that, that's the thing is, Lieutenant Commander Tactical. That would be great on the Vesta, which I technically do. I have a Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander Universal, because that allows me to take advantage of, like, cannon powers. Whereas Lieutenant Commander Tactical on the Dauntless, you can't equip cannon. I mean, yeah, you can equip turrets, but not the dual heavy cannons that everyone likes. So it's like, why well, have powers that high? Beam Overload 3? Mind Dispersal? Maybe, I guess. Torpedo High Yield? I mean, that, that's cool, but your science vessels, for Christ's sake, you're not supposed to focus on your weapons. Anyways, but, so, in consoles, it's five science, five science. Same thing. 
two engineering, two engineering, three tactical, three tactical. They have the same basic console slots. However, when I upgraded my Vesta, I got a bonus engineering console slot. Now, I didn't actually put anything in. I didn't put an engineering thing in there. I put, a pro I put projected singularity. So technically I have 11 console slots versus the Dauntless only has 10. Um, turn rate, I don't like turn rate. So the lower the turn rate that's not an Odyssey, the better. I like a moderate turn rate. Anybody, you know, I, if honestly, I would probably fly my wells. Uh, I just, it turns too fast. And I wish there was a turn rate decreasing console. Um, and then the inertia 40, it's, it's such a small inertial difference. It's not even that big a deal. Um, the Vesta comes with 15 aux, 15 aux. The Dauntless does not. I researched. The Vesta is a carrier, one hangar bay, one hangar bay. So that allows you a lot of versatility with that. The Dauntless? No, no, it does not. It has no hangar bays. So you're, yeah. And the intelligent powers, I looked at those, they're like, eh, it'd be really cool with an intelligent ship, but I don't know why they're good with the doll. Most of the intelligence powers that are able to be used that low are like, science already really does those kind of. They both have subsystem targeting, they both have sensor analysis. That's just a science vessel. So it's an obviously got a science vessel. When it comes down to what people really care about, I mean, the stats of the ship is nice and things can be modified with skills, but what do people really honestly care about other than the buff slots? The fun abilities at the bottom here. You know, what, the mastery. My upgrade ship does not have a mastery, but in place of that, I got an extra console slot. My mastery is, one, slots one, two, and three are the exact same as the Dawn. Number four mastery is more aux power. My bonus mastery is 10% shield hit points and 5% shield hardness. So I have just a flat 5% reduction to all incoming damage. As long as I have shields, which is fine because I boost my shields a lot. Not to mention I have the Mako Resilient Shields, which decreases all energy damage by 10%. And then plasma damage by another 10, 20. So, my, you know, any plasma damage coming into my shields is automatically reduced by 35%. That, cool. <laughs> but most of that's shield, so. And then 10% shield strength. Oh my god. Like, I look, my shields, and I don't even have, you know, I was just sitting at Kobali Prime. And I had like 13,000 shields. And some people are like, that's insane. How many consoles do you have on? I'm like, none. <laughs> I have no consoles increasing shield power. Like my science consoles currently are the three threat reducers that are uh, particle generators, graviton generators, and flow capacitors. And then I have the projected singularity in there. And the number, what's the other one? My Fermion field. Uh, we're getting into that one. So, and then the mastery is that crazy cloaking I talked about in a previous episode where you target a ship and it looks like you and all their buddies look like you, but you look like them and all your buddies look like you. Ah, uh, that uh, could be cool, I guess. I don't know. I, I would have to use that one to see if it's useful. I might have to ask my friend Jason if it's actually useful. It sounds... Gimmicky. Sounds as gimmicky as the uh, Pally Bubble, but we'll get into that one here in just a second. So, you know, the Dauntless, while it is a tier 6 vessel, it's full-blown tier 6, has a mastery. It's not the only way to get a ship mastery, by the way. You can get ship mastery through your intelligence officer specialization and the pilot and the commando. You get, you get starship traits through that, too. So, a tier 6 ship is not the only way to get starship traits. Now, for the Vesta, and I've been over this before because I've Oh, I love the Vesta. You have five, you have three consoles which have set bonus. <laughs> so you technically have five abilities that come with the Vesta, with the dual heavy cannons, and if you buy all three like I did, you get all three consoles, plus two extra powers, plus the chance of having three dual heavy cannons powered by your aux, not your weapons. So that all your weapons are, what, mm, we've been over that one. So the Fermion field, which is an AOE heal, but that's what the, that's what the console does on the Dauntless. It's a radiant cloud of AOE healing. You hit something with hazard emitters and everything within like three kilometers gets healed also a little bit. Whereas the Fermion field is just around me, but it's a beast. Like right now, because of my Starship Mastery, the number number three, which is 10% shield or healing and shield healing, all healing and shield healing, 5%, 10%. I hit emergency power to aux and I raise my damn thing to 135. I got the, I got the obelisk engine. Um, my Fermion field, heals for 1500 hit points a second. That's awesome! And, and, and shield heals, it's like 400 shields per facing, something like that, shield regen per facing, and then like 22 particle generator skill, as long as you're somewhere around me and I know how to position myself near people. Um, Aaron's, yeah, Aaron's got it, he knows. Sometimes I've just like zipped in really next to him and, and just, because and it looks really cool, anyways. Um, then what I call the Care Bear Stare, which actually comes on the Tactical Vesta, which is 
Um, a phaser beam does, it is modified by phaser damage, so if you use phaser, you can use phaser consoles in your tactical slots and increase the damage of your quantum field focus phaser, which is the Care Bear Stairs phaser beam coming out of your deflector dish. Um, it's, it's affected by your aux power, so plus 15 aux, plus emergency power to aux, and it's affected by your particle generator skill, which, uh, yeah, hi, um, which emergency power to aux gives you particle generator skill. Ah, you cannot activate the fermion field and the quantum field focus phaser. All your Vesta consoles go into a shared cooldown. Then there's what I call the kinetic bubble. It's the multi-dimensional waveform analysis module. It's basically, it looks like scattering field, except it's kind of got a shield on it and any kinetic damage that comes into you, whether it's cutting beam, torpedoes, tractor beam repulsors, tractor beam, anything that does kinetic damage to you, you reflect. And at moderate aux power, which I usually run about 85 aux power, I get about 1.1% or 110% reflection. And if I boost my aux with emergency power to aux, because why not, I can get up to 150% reflection. I've almost one shot a tactical cube because it threw a heavy plasma torpedo at me. Plus, the destructible torpedoes like that get it pushes things away from you, like a tractor beam repulsor. And you also have bonus kinetic damage resistance, so it's really cool in case something's going to explode next to you, and you're going to take... It's, it's, a, it's, it's a great kinetic shield, whereas scattering field, as a science officer, is really good energy shield. So and you can put both of those up at the same time, and you got a lot, and then you can hit all your normal healing abilities because you can't hit the fermion field. And then there's the super slipstream, which is the set two bonus, which you get four times slipstream turn rate, full blown slipstream speed, which is like currently warp 42 for me. I can turn in one sector block. I also have the obelisk engine, so. Anyways, but the set three is a pally bubble. If you play WoW, you know what I mean. This is a complete immunity bubble. I cannot put, I cannot do anything with my web, but I get a. I get 100% shield hardness. I am immune to everything. I hit emergency power to engine or evasive maneuvers and I out of there. Technically, the, the Vesta is a beefier tanky ship. The Dauntless is just as good. The Vesta, depends on playstyle, is is better under in some circumstances. So, and this goes for pretty much any sea store ship. There are some that are probably just like have always been relatively crappy as a sea store ship, but this is this is the best I can do right now because I can't necessarily compare the Andorian Kumari escorts to or the, the Odysseys to the Guardian. But looking at these stats, I, I don't I don't know why I'm getting so much crap over having a tier five upgrade ship when it's not it it's it's blindly I can't really even tell the difference. You guys need to stop. If you if you haven't told me or if you've like thought to yourself, well I have a tier six ship. I've got to be better. You have a tier six ship. You know what that means? You have a tier six ship. That's it. Tier five upgrade, they're still gonna be able to hold their own, if not be able to be better. Cool your jets, folks. I'm sorry I had to go over the math of this one, but I needed proof that, you know, if, if for some reason, if you think, oh, I'm gonna get the Dauntless, or I'm gonna get the Guardian, or I'm gonna have an in, you know, and the Intel ships are completely different on this because they are completely different class of ships. So they don't really compare with a science vessel or a cruiser, but the two that came in the box, or you can buy separate that are just a regular science vessel. Lay up on the people that have tier five upgrades, okay? Cause you know, a lot of them really like the ships they're flying and just because you have a six instead of a five U doesn't give you the right to shit on someone else. Live long and prosper and be nice to people. Mm -hmm. Don't care about Durak Clark.